What's up guys, this is Max Square, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can get a custom dock on your Mac that's not only aesthetically pleasing, but also can be a powerful tool to add to your daily workflow. So the way we can do this is by using an app called Ubar. And what this will basically do is replace the system or native dock for your Mac. So it'll hide that and replace it with its custom dock, which you can customize and add certain tools to. So let's check it out. So this is what my dock looks like right now. And there's a couple different options you can do for your themes. So if I jump into the preferences here and we just take a look at this first tab, you can see you can change the size of your icons. So if you want them to be pretty small and out of the way, or you can go to huge, which will be pretty easy to use. You can't actually scale down the dock itself. You just have to use these uh, presets here under size. You can choose rimless, which will just put a little bar at the top of each active uh, app. And then you can also change the position on the screen. So this is something that is really unique to this app and something that the default dock on Mac can't do. While you can go to the left and right on the dock for Mac, you can't go to the top and you definitely can't pin it like so. So if you want it to go from edge to edge of the screen, you can do that. If you want it on the bottom, left, right, it'll pin just like that. I thought the pinning thing was pretty cool at first, but because I'm on a 27 inch screen, I don't really need that much space for my dock. So I decided to go with something a little bit more minimal, just sitting here at the top, and that way I can go all the way to the bottom of the screen with my windows. If you have multiple displays, you can customize some settings there. You can turn on hiding. So just when you hover up on the uh, toolbar at the top or wherever you've chosen to put your dock, it'll appear there. There's a couple options here for the status of apps. So for any notification apps like texting or Slack, you can actually choose to enable or disable the notification icon for that. And then if there's any apps that need your attention, maybe they're frozen or whatever, you can see that. And what's cool about that is they make it pretty obvious in the toolbar. So when you're opening an app, it'll actually put like a gray stripe background on the back. So you can see that it's not actually open. And the same thing happens when it freezes as well. And then a really useful tool is the window previews. So window previews will basically just show you a thumbnail of all the windows you have open. So if I hover over Chrome, you'll see that I have two icons here, but if I open these windows up, you'll see it actually updates with the thumbnails to show that it's open. Now, I think this is a little annoying because I would rather just show what windows are open regardless of whether they're minimized or not, but it's still pretty helpful when you have a ton of different uh, windows open, especially just for one app, and you can quickly see where you are with these little titles and stuff. Now, if you've been on this channel before, you'll know that I really love customizing my apps and making them a little bit nicer to look at, especially ones that I use every day. And so you can actually customize the theme of this. I have it just set to system and I have my whole system on auto. So during the day, it's on this light theme. And then when my toolbar and wallpaper switch to the dark UI, so will U-Bar. And you can actually change this to be system. You can keep it on light, go to dark, and they have a couple of other options. And then you also have a custom option which is pretty limited in my opinion. The background opacity, for example, can only go to 5% and it would be pretty cool if you could go to zero. And you only really get four options for the colors and they don't have any opacity on that. So it would be nice to add maybe like a faint color for active apps, but they kind of force you to use solid colors. So I just keep it on system, which is fine for now. But what I get most out of this app are the tools. And so you'll see I actually have a clock here at the top right. And if I hover over here, it'll actually show me a calendar with a preview of all my events. So if I click into this, calendar will actually pop up, which is really quick. I think it's way faster than just opening up Spotlight and typing it in. And I've definitely used this on a couple of calls when I'm talking to someone and I need to quickly make an appointment, see if I'm available. I can even just hover over and if I know the day is clear, I can go ahead and make that appointment. I don't have to type in there or go find a planner or anything. And then on the left here, you'll see that it says U-Bar and this isn't just for aesthetics. If you click on this, it's actually a shortcut menu to open up certain folders. You can go open up system preferences and they even show you a dropdown for system preferences. So sometimes when you're installing an app and it makes you verify that that's safe, you can quickly come over to system preferences, jump down here to security and privacy and give that uh, application permission, which is way faster than opening up system preferences and spending at least 30 seconds trying to 
to figure out where it is, which I do every single time. Now what you see on that menu is completely customizable under the menu tab. You can enable any of the preset folders or if you have some other custom folders, you can just add them here through Finder and then you can have that as a shortcut right in your dock. If you don't want the menu at all, you can jump into areas and just turn that off. And underneath that, you'll see we have favorites. Now this did take me some time to figure out for this app because when I first opened it up, I had a bunch of apps open, but then when I started quitting them, they all disappeared from my dock. So I was only left with one app that was running. So if you want that to happen, you can leave it as is, but I decided to use favorites that way even if the app is closed, it'll still show up because I like to have just a certain amount of tools that I'm familiar with always there. So what you need to do to make sure that works is to check show favorites, and then you actually have to open all the apps you want for favorites, right click and select add to favorites. And what's more annoying is that you actually have to manually select move back, move forward and move across to get these to the position that you want them to. So you can't just click and drag or there's no simple arrangement tool in the preferences. You actually have to manually do that. But of course, if this is for favorites, you do it once and then it's set up. And again, if I select don't show favorites, it'll just show apps that are currently open. And if I start to close those like so, you'll see that they disappear pretty quickly. And then my dock gets pretty small. There's a couple other features you can see here, like showing the desktop. So if your windows are super cluttered, then what you can do is just click this little icon at the top. It'll move all those windows to the left and right and up and down, whatever. And then you can see what files are on your desktop. If you're someone who uses multiple spaces, you can check that and you can click and jump between those. You can show your battery, show the trash icon, and then you can enable or disable the date and time. So that's pretty much the bulk of the features here. There is a list of apps that you can exclude kind of blacklisting those apps to never show up on the dock if you want. Maybe if you have tools that just run in the background and there's no way to disable the icon, you could just add those to the list and then they won't show up. You can also add some shortcuts. And then lastly, there's a feature to enable dockless mode, which will basically just completely hide your native dock so that U-Bar is the only thing that shows up. So I actually had this mode off when I was first testing the app just to get a hang of it. And if I needed to get an app really quickly, I could just hover over to the right side of the screen and my dock was there. And then once I got the hang of it, I switched it on. So I think U-Bar is a pretty powerful tool and I've been using it for a couple days now and really been enjoying it but there are definitely some things that I don't like about it. The first thing is the price. It is $30 and I think that is just a little too much for what the app is offering, mainly because there's some bugs and features missing that I think could have been incorporated, which I will get into in just a second. I do wanna mention that I got this app through my subscription to Set App, so I didn't actually pay anything for Ubar, but because I have a subscription there, I was able to get access to it. If you're interested in that, I did do a video and I'll link it up here and you can check that out. So a couple things that I noticed that were a little annoying is that if you turn hiding on, it isn't very smooth when it comes in and out of the screen. Now that may just be because I have it at the top and it doesn't know where my mouse is, whether it's on the menu bar, whatever, but you can see it, even as I'm hovering over now, it's just a little glitchy. If I do move it to the bottom, you can see it's a little smoother, kind of like the native dock, but I still think for the premium price, they should have fixed that top bug right there. Another thing is with the calendar pop-up. So when I hover over the clock or the date up here, you'll see the calendar pops up, but it's only there to preview. You can't hover over and see anything. And the idea I would assume is to make you click on the clock so that the app actually opens up, but it can be annoying if you're a little distracted and just wanna take a glance and your mouse like moves slightly off the screen. If you're using spaces, I found a bug where if you don't have any and then you make new ones and then you come back to hit desktop, the windows don't actually move off the screen. They just kind of get stuck. And once you restart U-Bar, it actually works fine. But I was able to recreate this a couple times. I don't know if you have to do it in this exact order. Maybe if you already had existing spaces and opened U-Bar, they index it or whatever, and then it works. But I just found that to be a little annoying if you're expecting it to work first time. As I mentioned earlier, it would have been nice to have a little bit more options for the theming, maybe change the color of the icons or the status, colors, stuff like that. But I think their main focus is on the tools and I've found that to be their strongest point. So is it worth it for $30? I would just go ahead and say no. I think maybe $10 for what they're offering would be cool. I probably wouldn't pay much more than that. 
And because I have a subscription to Setup, I got it for free. So that's why I've been using it. This isn't a sponsored ad for Setup at all, but if you're considering it, I would encourage you to check it out. Like I said, I've had this for a few days and I've really been enjoying it. At first it was a little jarring to have it on the top of the screen, but then I kind of got used to it. It's kind of like the iPhone 10 notch where you get the top left and right corners of your screen back. So you can put full height windows on the left and right, which I've really enjoyed using. So guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe down below for more content. I'll see you in the next one.